Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a severe weather outbreak, including tornadoes, damaging winds, as well as heavy snow. Plus, next week is already looking interesting. Good morning, everyone. We got a lot to talk about this today, so let's kind of delve into the details of what's happening out here. We're, talk we're looking at this massive trough that's going to be diving southward, and as it does, that's going to be ejecting eastward with well southwest winds out ahead of it we got a lot of warmer air that's going to be tapping into plus a juicy air mass with dew points rising as we speak and as this instability interacts with this upper upper level jet it's going to create uh severe weather starting into that wednesday night uh time frame so if we take a look at the overall 500 millibar wind speed we can see this powerful upper level jet that's going to be racing across and it's when it crosses into texas it's going to have some lift into it so we're going to have a lot of a vertical winds are going to be coming off from the southwest and it's going to be tapping into this dry line that's going to be setting up off here in west texas and as it gets towards the red river we're going to have a little bit greater uh you know instability into oklahoma where we could be seeing some of those strong to severe thunderstorms start to break out because at the same time we've got winds coming from the south uh, screaming at over 80 to 90 knots and that's going to be creating that vertical shear and that kind of rotation uh in the atmosphere right along the dry line so it really starts to set up really kind of after midnight uh time frame in and around uh, west texas going into western oklahoma and then really starts to amplify as it gets closer to the dallas warwick metroplex and really starts to amplify as we get towards east texas going into the into the arklatex into the overnight hours into thursday uh time frame if we take a look at the cape uh, your convective available potential energy with this type of system it's not the greatest i mean this is february folks i mean right now it's hitting at about 500 750 so we are going to have some supercell thunderstorms going to be breaking out uh, off the dry line here with a very dry air mass uh, back behind it and a very warm moist air air mass out ahead of it and as it taps and kind of clashes into that air mass it's going to create those supercell thunderstorms and over in and around where the greatest forcing is looks to be closer to the red river and to uh, oklahoma as we get into that wednesday night uh time frame so if you take a look at the latest uh storm prediction center they've already highlighted that south risk where they which they've had for several days now uh, but they have shifted it a little bit further northward as new some of the model guidance has kind of a honed in on areas north of say i-30 and in, into the Ellsworth area into closer to the red river going into the oklahoma area where they could have a lot more greater forcing where that upper level low is going to be near and to the southeastward that's where we're going to be in that you know to the right of that triple point and some of those could have a lot of updraft with it and that would include some tornadoes uh, with some of those isolated spin-ups it's definitely not out of the question in and around the Dallas Worth area going into Oklahoma as we get into the overnight hours on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So the main impact is going to be your damaging wind with this particular system as we look to have a broken a squall line that's going to be racing across. I mean, 50 to 60 miles an hour. These are going to be very quick movers into the overnight hours. So it's one of those things that you need to have your weather radio handy uh, to get all your alerts and watches and warnings so you can go to your safe zone uh, if need be into these warnings because you're going to have little to no warning with these types of systems moving 50 to 60 miles an hour so you definitely need to be weather aware uh, in this area and where the greatest updrafts are yeah it's going to have a potential to see in some of those large hailstones uh, fall out of the sky as well but so let's kind of time this uh, you know, outbreak out. So I think it starts to originate and starts to come to fruition, forming off the dry line. This is not really until one o'clock in the morning. This is the H triple R, the latest composite refit reflectivity model. And I think this really kind of shows the true depiction on how this is going to play out because it really doesn't get going until after midnight time frame, where we should see some large. Uh, thunderstorms start to break out here into west texas into western parts of oklahoma and as these race across and as it taps into that upper level jet 
it's going to be intensifying so yes the main instability is really going to be along you know north of interstate 30 especially going towards the red river getting into oklahoma where some of these could have some you know areas of spin and rotation so a brief isolated spin up of a tornado is definitely not out of the question some large hail is associated with this system as well as damaging winds is going to be your greatest concern because it looks to be kind of a, a broken line especially into the dallas worth area but again these race these are going to be racing across it at 50 to 60 miles an hour so i'm not really expecting say that much terribly much of precipitation with this system because it's moving just so fast but there are going to be isolated pockets where the air, the area of instability is going to be high so you definitely have to be concerned in this area but as it moves out uh, we've got a lot of cold air of trailing behind it but i wanted to highlight the severe weather risk first and then we'll go back and highlight the the, the the heavy snow and some of the icing risk that's going to be on the northwest side of this system so as this continues to race across getting into that thursday time frame i think it really starts to amplify that low level jet once it hits the arclitex i think it really starts to intensify as this continues to push further off into the east and as well as the vertical shear will also intensify as we get into that arkansas area portions of Missouri getting into Louisiana especially as you get into uh, Mississippi and to Alabama racing into Tennessee going into portions of Kentucky by then as again this these systems are going to be moving you know 50 60 miles an hour uh, along that that jet and then there's the there's the risk from the storm prediction center has already highlighted so it impacts you know portions of Oklahoma and impacts portions of Texas on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. And that just continues to race eastward, impacting portions of Missouri, especially as you get into Arkansas, into Louisiana, and then pretty much the entire state of Mississippi. Uh, and then going into western parts of Tennessee, western parts of Kentucky, and then kind of fading with the severe weather risk, but still prevalent as this continues to race across into Georgia, portions of South Carolina, portions of North Carolina, getting into Virginia, as well as even West Virginia, and then impacting uh, going towards Kentucky as we get to later into the day on Thursday as this continues to race across. But it's going to have a, a lot of water vapor in it with it. As soon as, so as soon as it taps into, you know, as it gets into Texas, it's going to have the Pacific moisture to play. And so these dew points are hitting at right around 60, 61 degrees, right around the, the, the Red River. So I think that's where it's going to have the greatest forcing and with that severe weather. But as it moves across and is able to tap into those warmer waters of the Gulf, I think that's when it's going to have a lot more juice uh, to work with and a lot more capability of these thunderstorms starting to rotate and a little bit greater higher rain amounts as well as we have a lot of forcing coming off from the gulf and you can see these winds traversing across and these will race across into the eastward as we get into the daytime on thursday and then some of the heavier rains are going to be over portions of mississippi into uh, alabama getting to georgia going into portions of kentucky indiana and ohio and then you could have some a little bit greater forcing with some heavier rains into portions of uh, you know northwestern Georgia, getting into portions of the Carolinas here with that slight risk for excessive rainfall with this particular system as this continues uh, to race across. But it's pretty much gone by Friday. <laughs> it's already off the East Coast by Friday morning, but then we have to deal with, let's talk about the cold side to this system. So as we get into the overnight hours on wednesday night we're we're, we're going to have that snow breaking out into into colorado into places in denver where that that low pressure system starts to set up just to the northwest of there you're going to have a lot of icing with this system so you're talking places into portions of the texas panhandle portions of the oklahoma panhandle getting into kansas we're going to have that heavier snow start to break out just to its northwest so as we go through time into that Thursday, Thursday afternoon time frame, you've got a lot of forcing just to the northwest of this, where you're going to be seeing some of these heavy bandings, the north side of the deformation zone. That's where the heavier banding and convective banding is going to be taking place. And then just to the south of that, that's where you're going to have elongating sector 
of that ice as well and then that heavier rain will be south of there so there's gonna be a sharp gradient where people are going to be seeing the heavier snow the icing event with this particular system and then it's just going to be all rain to the south south side as this continues to race across and as we get into that thursday uh night time frame there's the snow break still still in around missouri going in through illinois but lifting north northward into uh, michigan and up here into canada by then where again you're going to have icing to the south side of that and then that heavier rain to the south of that and as this pushes into uh, the, the mid-atlantic and portions of the northeast as well and then again like as i mentioned by friday it's gone <laughs> it's basically this is friday morning at 6 a.m this is really off the east coast by then with the snow impacting portions of canada as we could actually say goodbye to this system so this is a very quick moving system it's about a, a very active 36 hour time frame that really starts to set up over uh, portions of Texas and Oklahoma into that overnight hour, you know, midnight time frame on Wednesday night, races across Missouri, the uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, you know, Tennessee. So you're talking about a multi-state severe weather potential outbreak with this particular system and with some tornadoes, damaging winds, and some large hail all associated with it. So it's going to be a bumpy 36-hour window but by the time we get into that 36, you know, Friday after Friday morning time frame, it's going to be gone <laughs> with this system as this continues to push across. But here's where your heavier snow swath would likely be. There's going to be a, a, a band really right around the Texas Panhandle into Oklahoma, getting into portions of Kansas, going through Missouri, going through Illinois, Indiana, as well as, as getting into portions of the Great Lakes and going into portions of Canada. I think along this band, easily three to six inches, but you're still going to have some isolated banding within this sector of six to ten, and some of these areas may pick, pick up a foot. But again, this is going to be moving at 50, 60 miles an hour. So this is going to be continue uh, to race across. So these are quick hits as this continues to race across. And then we're going to have a that, that, that ice threat as well. So you definitely have to be concerned to the south of that, uh, you know, to the south where that snow is going to be falling, of that ice threat on the roads uh, going through that Thursday into that Friday morning uh, time frame. But let's take a look at next week. Because, I mean, this has been a roller coaster, right? I mean, it's February. You seem to have these Arctic blasts that come through. They're quick hit systems. And then by the time we get into that Sunday time frame, things start to modify again. It goes back to more or less a zonal flow, flow off the Pacific. You got warm winds coming from the south. These, you know, where the brown shaded areas, those are well above average temperatures going into your late weekend. Uh, and then as we get into that Tuesday time frame again, it's like deja vu. I mean, we got another powerful upper level jet diving down into our western states. And that really starts to amplify as we get into that Tuesday, uh, February 22nd time frame. And then out ahead of it, there's your warm sector. I mean, it's Texas, it's Oklahoma, it's Kansas. So it's all along the northeast as the winds of time to the atmosphere is kind of, you know, regrouped itself. And by the time we get into that Tuesday time frame again, we've got a lot of instability in the atmosphere with well below average temperatures out west, well above average temperatures out east. And then you got that clash again. And just to the north of there, you got another Arctic front that's going to be diving southward Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday time frame of next week. As we get into that February 24th, we'll see a lot of cold air again entering the picture you know, diving southward. So we got that warm sector out ahead of it. So we've got, again, another active week, probably a lot more severe weather, uh, you know, more more icing and more, more heavier snow, and then a cold blast to follow, kind of a lot like we had this week. So it continues to look, you know, pretty rapid rebounds and more roller coaster type temperatures. And then that's going to tap into some above average precipitation as well. So you got that Arctic blast is going to be surging southward as well. It's going to be tapping into that, you know, above average precipitation along the Four Corners regions, getting into Texas and getting into portions of the Missouri Valley and of the o Ohio Valley as well. So again, it's going to be a pretty active week. Uh, more severe weather is going to be on the table, more icing on the table and places to be seeing some heavier snow as well. So we'll be able to fine tune that particular setup 
next week, but it definitely continues to look remaining active, especially as we get into next week as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.